do we really want to go cashless? I love cash. I love the look of cash. I love the feel of cash. Uh, I love the smell of cash. I love the smell of cash in the morning. When you pay with cash, the transaction's over. You don't get a, a bill three weeks later saying you owe someone, and then if you don't pay on time, you owe them some more. Cash is better. Cash is cleaner. Our founding fathers didn't build this nation on Bitcoin. Thomas Jefferson didn't purchase slaves with an American Express card. I'm tired of walking into the dry cleaners or fast food joints that don't take cash. All I have is cash. Look at my cash. Look, what am I supposed to do with these singles? Go to a strip club every night? Cash is the purest form of capitalism there is. I need cash. I want cash. I crave cash. Don't cash me out. Don't take my cash away. I pay cash, therefore I am. Cash is life itself. D -d Don't take away my romantic walks on the beach at sunset. Don't take away my Popeye's three-piece combo meals. And for the love of God, for the love of God, don't take away my cash stash or I will go gambling bad! <laughs> Norman Chad. Norman Chad. Norman Chad. Norman Chad. Norman Chad. And welcome to Gambling Mad. I'm your host, Norman Chad. Gambling Mad, as always, brought to you by. Fritos, picked every morning fresh off of Central California trees, delivered to your retailer the same afternoon. And by Fresca. It's remarkable. It's recuperative. It is refreshing. It's Fresca. Fritos and Fresca, it's a meal. Coming up today on the show is Yankee Stadium, the most expensive place on earth. Can everyone just pipe down for a moment about Caitlin Clark? And we will have the Mount Rushmore of cuisine. Did your home country make the, make, the, make, make, make the monument? I don't think so. But first, the happiest place on earth, we're told, is Disneyland. But is it? If you're a Disney stockholder the last 60 plus years, you probably live in a very, very happy place. But if you're a Disneyland worker or customer, You've got to pay quite a price to be in such a happy place just a few hours a day. The Walt Disney Company's IPO date was November 12th, 1957. If you bought 100 shares at the opening price of $13.88 and held it, you'd be talking eight figures now. Something north of $10 million in your bank account off of 100 shares. Disney, of course, also owns ESPN, and even though Disney's stock has been struggling the last three years, you're still eating better than Mickey Mouse. On the other hand, a Disneyland one-day pass cost $43 in the year 2000. These days, it's $194. Now, I'm not an economist, but as an economist wannabe, it seems to me that the money keeps flowing out of our pockets into their pockets. I don't even know who they are, but they have all the money. At one point we had this, they might have had this, but now we've got this and they've got that. Can you see how, is that easy to see without a graph? Yes, it is. I'll say this for Disneyland, countless native Angelinos swear by it. You know, I, I, Disneyland defined their youth and if they stick around L.A. and start their own families, their kids also love Disneyland. But me, I would take that $194 and make it last as long as I could playing bingo at Powell Station Casino in Las Vegas. Sure, that Space Mountain ride is pretty darn cool, but there's nothing more satisfying than shouting out, BINGO! I love bingo. You know, actually... Bingo is, uh, they used to play bingo at Hollywood Park here in Los Angeles before, before that place closed, a separate room up on the third floor. They still play bingo in a couple of casinos in Las Vegas. And, I, I, you know, I am anti-cigarettes, I'm anti-tobacco, I'm anti-smoking. I feel for smokers, though, who are addicted. And the bingo room is one of the last places in America where you could smoke. 
It's just amazing. I used to go into the Hollywood Park one just to, to hang out. And, I mean, the haze of smoke was incredible. The secondhand smoke was incredible. Uh, watching all these people smoke cigarette after cigarette while marking the little bingo cards was incredible. But, you know, it felt like Norman Rockwell's America to me. It's the last place in America where you can smoke and nobody will tell you to put out your cigarette. Our theme this week is where does the money go? The answer, as I told you a little earlier, out of our pockets and into their pockets. Let's take a look at the tickets, parking and concessions at the most famous baseball park in the world, Yankee Stadium, home of the most famous baseball team in the world, the New York Yankees. According to a New York Post analysis, a family of four going to a typical Yankee game will spend on the average $860. $860 for a baseball game. It makes the New York Mets games look like a Dollar Tree bargain. Let's just take a look at these prices at Yankee Stadium. The four tickets, and they're not good tickets, will cost you $500. Parking is $47. Two beers each for mom and dad, that's $61. Burgers seem like a bargain at $9, but they come without anything. Fries are another $9. Don't get me started on Cracker Jacks. They don't even have legit prizes in there anymore. Have you bought a box of Cracker Jacks? They used to have those cute little prizes, those cute little statues, and all these type of things you could do. Now, at best, you get one of these temporary tattoos that you put on your right here, and it washes off that night. Now, I, I talked recently how it costs a family of four $200 just to go bowling. I have to apologize to Bolero, which runs all these bowling centers. You can get four nights with the whole family bowling for the price of one night at Yankee Stadium. And I don't even like the Yankees. Martin Quintana owns the famous taco restaurant in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He wanted to open a second location but food outlets in the development he was interested in were limited to, quote, sandwich bar style restaurants whose primary business is to sell made to order or Subway style sandwiches, end quote. So Quintana went to court and he got the decision he wanted. Superior Court Judge Craig Bobay ruled that tacos and burritos are Mexican style sandwiches. Thank you, Judge. Hey, I have no legal training, but I could have made that same ruling in a Mexico City minute. The taco's like bread. You hold it in your hand, the taco protects the thing inside, and they eat it. The burrito, that, 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 that's like bread. It's a flour tortilla. It's bread. And then you eat it. It's a sandwich. By the way, if you actually happen ever to be to Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I have some peeps who have told me about the famous taco, you should go to the famous taco before you ever go to a Subway, even though Subway serves Subway-style sandwiches. I want to take a moment out right now because we get all caught up in a lot of stuff that you know makes me a little angry to lighten it up and just tell you one of my old favorite gambling jokes. This is a... Uh, this is in the Hall of Fame of gambling jokes. Some of you might have heard it. There's a guy who lives in Minnesota. One morning, he hears a voice in his head. The voice says, quit your job, sell your house, take all your money, and go to Las Vegas. He ignores the voice. But all day, he hears the voice again and again and again. It won't stop. Quit your job, sell your house, take all your money, and go to Las Vegas. He can't take it anymore. He decides that he believes the voice. So he quits his job, sells his house, takes all his money, and flies to Las Vegas. As soon as he steps off the plane, the voice says, go to Caesar's Palace. He goes to Caesar's, and the voice says, make your way to the roulette tables. He goes to the roulette tables, and the voice says, put all your money on red 23. He puts all his money on red 23. The dealer spins the wheel. It comes up black 17. The voice says, fuck. <laughs> I guess me every time. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Time now for the Mount Rushmore of cuisine. Do I hear music? I don't think so. Let's do it. Chinese. Okay, you give them rice or noodles, and they will give you interesting quality food 
365 days a year. 366 in a leap year like 2024. They're a little slow to come off the chopsticks, but we're not talking silverware here. We're talking subline cooking day in and day out. Next, Italian. You give them pasta and they will give you interesting quality food 365 days a year. 366 in a leap year like 2024. Now, they've gotten a little lazy on the pizza front. I mean, New Jersey and Connecticut alone are kicking their ass there, but Italians enjoy a four course feast nightly with good vino. Next, French. You give them anything and they will make it better. I am reminded of Bum Phillips quote about Alabama football coach Bear Bryant. He said he can take his in and beat urine and then take urine and beat his in. <laughs> Think about it. Okay. <laughs> we have a lack of appreciation here for the incredible work the French have done in the kitchen over the last 800 years or so. What, do you think Julia Child was wrong? She wasn't wrong. Okay, and the fourth and final member of the Mount Rushmore of cuisine? Nope, ain't happening. The Chinese, Italian, and French are the foundation of all fine food everywhere. I can't in good conscience add another ethnic cuisine to that Mount Rushmore. Now, I'm not taking anything away from, from Spanish and Greek and Thai and Indian and Brazilian and, 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 and Japanese and, and American food, okay? I will not acknowledge German food. Nope, not happening. No honor Germans. But it all began with the big three. Even though I've got to tell you, I got a hankering for a Five Guys burger and some fries right now. Of those fries. A friend of mine is a big Pepsi fan. He takes exception with my selection of Coca-Cola on the Mount Rushmore of soft drinks. He claims if I did a blind taste test of Pepsi and Coke, either I could not tell them apart, that's absurd, or I would prefer Pepsi. Fiddlesticks. But fine, I'm up for this taste test right here, right now. Okay, now I'm supposed to have a blindfold, but our knucklehead PA forgot to bring one in. Okay, so, okay, he's gone. <laughs> he's on two-week loan, I don't know from where. But the more important thing is that I do not have a blindfold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my glasses. <laughs> okay, take off my glasses and close my eyes and do a blind taste test. Well, let me just switch them around. Okay, okay, here we go. Before we wrap up, I'm going to say this one time and one time only. Stop hating on Caitlin Clark. Stop whining that she gets too much attention. Stop whining that she's overhyped and overrated. Stop whining about her courtside manner. Stop whining that she left her jump shot in college. Stop whining that she's a rookie who's getting her comeuppance right now. Stop whining that she's off to a slow start in the WNBA. Stop whining that she's not Larry Bird or Michael Jordan or Rebecca Lobo or Mother Teresa for that matter. Stop whining that she's white or she's not black or she should be purple. And most of all, just stop watching if you have so many problems with her. You know, I don't like family feud. But instead of whining about it all, all day long, you know, I simply watch Wheel of Fortune instead. <laughs> hey, some guy got a puzzle. <laughs> some guy got a puzzle really, really, really wrong last week. He mentioned someone's butt. <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. It was 
funny. Oh, I love people. And I certainly don't hate Caitlin Clark. That will do it for another episode of Gambling Mad. I'm Norman Chad. Hope to see you again. And remember, if you're going to roll the dice, make sure they're loaded. Gambling Mad with Norm Chad is written by Norm Chad and ghost written by Norm Chad. Executive producer John Scheinberg, Rick Barrio Dill, and produced by Norm Chad and Rick Barrio Dill. Associate producer is Bree Cooley. Showrunner is Dan Telfer. Audio, video, engineering, and studio facilities provided by 360 Pod Studios Beverly Hills and Slap Studios LA. If you want to complain to Norm about anything, make sure to reach out at Gambling Mad Show anywhere you get your socials and at Gambling Mad with Norm Chad on YouTube. And if you really want to get at him, send a message to info at Slap Studios LA. And big, big thanks to Tony, the special sauce, who truly is the boss. Thank you for the cookies and the treats. Uh, we promise you to make the post-production move faster.